Hello, uh, my name is Jordi Mas, and I'm community uh, director of Open Bravo. Previous to that, uh, I worked for Novel, a software developer involved in the open source mono project. And nowadays, I'm still a contributor to the Genome, Abbey World, and obviously the Mono Project and the Open Bravo Project. Then I have been working for with open source since year 2001. Then my presentation today is going to be focused on the Open Bravo community. How does the Open Bravo community looks like and which efforts are, are we doing in, in that direction? I, I also want to apologize. I, I don't speak German. I have very little German. Then I, I will do the presentation in English. Then if someone has uh, wants to clarify anything, we are going to have a question and answer uh, session after my talk. Or I will be around for the next four or five hours. Then feel free to ask me anything that you have regarding the Open Bravo project. I also want to thank the organization for giving me the opportunity to be here today and, uh, and to be able to do this speak. Then um, my speak is going to be focused basically on three things. First, the product. I think that Walter has covered very extensively the capabilities of our, of our product. But I want to give you um, a very uh, some highlights that for me are very important from a community development perspective. Then I would like to show you what are the size and the numbers and the activity of our community, how we all together, this ecosystem around the Open Bravo project are bringing value together. And then also I want to show you uh, a few things that we are doing uh, that we have just presented uh, or we are in the process of presented, presenting during these days that for me are very important during the next uh, couple of months uh, to be able to, to go even forward in terms of, of community building. Then I, I also want to give you a, a very brief uh, overview of what is Open Bravo. Open Bravo is a company that uh, started in Pamplona in, in the north of Spain in year 2001. I don't know if you're familiar with the Rune with the Bulls. If you read the, the book uh, La Fiesta from, from Hemingway, I'm, I'm sure that you're familiar. Then uh, that was a, a small uh, service company. Then uh, in year 2006, we, we, we had access to uh, 5 million uh, euros BC money that helped us to target international markets to mature our product and to obviously make it uh, suitable for more uh, industries and, and countries. Then I would like to start with the presentation. Then I will start introducing the product. Uh, and first of all, uh, I would like to say that uh, we are a professional company. We are here for business, and that's clear. And I think that uh, it's something that Walter uh, made quite clear in his presentation. But um, as, as an open source project, obviously, we are ready to embrace everyone that is around and be between all of us uh, try to reach uh, other objectives. We are uh, obviously web native and um, based on, on on open standards, I mean, we are based in HTML, XML, SQL. On top of that, we run, we run in open source uh, stack. I mean, we use MySQL, we use Apache, we use Java, we use Linux, we use Pentaho, we use Jasper. Then we obviously rel relay in, in, in the work of many other communities in, in order to, to put our solution together. We are open source, and for, for us at Open Bravo, open source means basically three things. I mean, we have a, a, a license that is open source complaint. Um, we have a business model that is open source uh, friendly. And then we have an open development model, and I think that that's very important. Uh, our community is a community based on meritocracy. I mean, we take the decisions uh, based on what all the people in our ecosystem thinks and not only in what Open Bravo, that is actually one of the major uh, sponsors of this project, uh, has as, a, as an objective. Then, uh, and I think that point is very important, you know, to, to have an open uh, source development approach. Then in terms of functionality, Open Bravo has uh, everything there that a uh, standard SMA might need, you know, a small and medium enterprise. And that ranks, obviously, sales, management, 
product management, service, financial, uh, and so on. Because we are open source, um, we are leveraging on other individuals and companies to make this solution uh, more suitable for other market segments, for other industries, and for other countries. Because uh, as I will talk later, localization is one of the challenges for any project in our market segment. Then, how to get started with Open Bravo? No? Uh, Open Bravo is an open source uh, project. Here you have a few resources that can be useful to you. You can download it. It's open, it's free. Uh, in order to understand it better, we have a, a, a wiki, an open, what we call the Open Bravo Wiki, that is uh, a place where we publish all the documentation of the, of the project. There are more than 1,000 documents. Uh, most of them are in English, but um, some of them have been uh, translated to other languages, like Spanish, German, uh, and so on. It's open, and everyone can participate on this. Um, there are the Open Bravo forums, where, where we have around 100, uh, no, 1,000 messages per month, and there is lots of activity of, of people trying to understand better how the system works, uh, helping others to fix their uh, to fix, fix their problems, and so on. As you can imagine, uh, uh, Open Bravo is a very large piece of software, and it takes some time to understand all, all his functionality. And, and we have an IRC where we have around, uh, nowadays, 20, 30 people hanging around. Then, obviously, we have development resources. We have um, the source code available. Everyone can connect to, um, to our uh, source control system. And you can ask uh, for developers uh, access, written access to. Um, and also, we have a public backtracking system where we ca you, you can see um, all, all the issues that we know about the product and what are the functional uh, improvements that the product is going to have in future versions. Then, I would like also to share you some statistics um, of our community. Um, we had already, we started in April 2006, and since then we had around uh, more than 1 million uh, downloads already, and this is amazing, you know, we are used, uh, we were used an a small company from the north of Spain, and, you know, and, and thanks to, 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 you know, to be able to leverage properly on the community, to be able to leverage properly on the work of other people, we, we have been able to, to reach uh, this very large number of downloads. We have around um, 1,000 messages per month uh, in, in the forums for Open Bravo RP. And in our documentation site, Open Bravo Wiki, we have around nowadays 20,000 unique users per month and almost 2,000, 200,000 um, page views. Then, one of the areas where we are le leveraging a lot, um, building on top of, of the community, is localization. You know, uh, as you can imagine, uh, an ERP is a very complex system to localize. You obviously have to translate it to, to different languages. You have to support different ac accounting schemes. You have to support different uh, taxes, taxes systems. And Obviously, th there are many requirements that are very local to some countries, you know, for example, in, in the way that you calculate stock devaluation, in the way that you have to connect to, to government systems, and so on. Then we already have 51 active localization projects lead by our community. 15 of those have produced uh, deliverables that we consider uh, that allow you to, to deploy Open Bravo. Some of them are not complete localizations, but um, there are these 15 localizations are used already in business. No, some of them in in, in very specific uh, market segments. Then they might not be ready for larger market segments, and all of them are fully ready. No, from these 15 localizations, o Open Bravo only has been heavily invested in, in two of them. That is the American one for the uh, United States market. Uh, and the Spanish one, because you know we started in Spain and we we have um, many partners there. Then, then from here, uh, another thing that I think that is interesting um, to, to bring. Uh, one of the things that that we did um, 
is we have a, a document that is published in, in our web that is called the Open Brow Manifesto. And I, I think that this is a very interesting document, to docu document for you to look to because it basically draws the line where uh, Open Bravo is, is ready to invest in, in this project. We actually are the, the largest company investing on this project. Um, that's the reason why it's named after our company. But there are many other companies uh, investing in, in this project too. And the, the, the fact that, for example, you have someone that is a li little individual helping the forums, that's a huge contribution already. Then we value all the contributions, not only code contributions, that we already have uh, a few code contributions. Then the Open Bravo Manifesto, basically what, what, what it states is that we will keep these projects open source with an open source license uh, <laughs> for the time that at least we lead them. Um, that we believe in open standards, no? and that's the reason why we leverage in XML, HTML, and o o all the web technologies. Um, that we believe strongly in meritocracy. You know, I mean, we, we think that a project uh, has to be drawn not by democracy, not by uh, the people that is putting the money, by the people that is actually making it happen for the people that uh, is driving the effort. And on top of that, um, there are an, uh, another commitments that we do, like try to provide the infrastructure to make the project possible and keep all the documentation open for the project. No? And that's very interesting because uh, then the people that uh, join the project has very clear what uh, Open Bravo in, in terms of, of commitments and, and in terms of e ethics we are up to. And also it helps us to also to draw the line where our commercial products are. No? And everybody understands that um, e everyone that is in this project, not only ni only us, is, is here uh, for business because you know an open an ARP is not the kind of infrastructure that uh, you build for fun. It's something that you use in most of the cases you build uh, for business. Then I want to introduce you now two of the uh, efforts that we have been working lately that uh, for uh, us are key milestones uh, in order to set the right directions in the future for us to grow into the next wave of, of, of open source projects. Then the first one is Open Bravo Modularity. Walter talked about the modularity uh, briefly. I want you to give some additional overviews. Why modularity is important? Because Open Bravo, as any ERP, is a complex system. I mean, there is people that need to extend it for localization because uh, Sometimes localization requires you to, to change the code, to change the, the, the business processes, to change the, the way that you do things. Um, there is people that obviously have to change the source code to make it uh, suitable for other industries, for other market segments. And obviously, as any RP, there is the need to customize it for your customers. Then, uh, basically, I will say that everyone that is around Open Bravo has to customize the product in different ways. Obviously, we work very hard with all these people to make sure that all the enhancements that make sense can be included in the core project, that in the next version, they don't have to maintain these customizations. We, we, we take care of documenting them, maintaining them, putting them to the code of, of to the quality standards of, of the code of the project, and so on. But modularity is, is key because everyone hits the same problem. You know, they, they have to extend the product I, in a certain way. Then. In, in the new version of the, of the product, in, in Open Bravo 250, that is already released in beta and is going to be released as final version in the next couple of weeks, we have introduced a, a modularity system that is very, very similar to what Eclipse does. Then basically, you can have independent pieces of software that can have the complete whole life cycle of the product separately from Open Bravo as a product. And that's very interesting because if you have to do some extensions, for example, to uh, adapt Open Bravo to the uh, hospitality sector, you can keep all of this separated from the core project, you know, having a different uh, release cycle and obviously having uh, uh, a different uh, standards in terms of, of releasing, in terms of quality, and, and so on. Then, for me, the key point in this slide is that modules are complete, completely independent. Then here is a summary of what Open Bravo Modularity uh, brings to in, 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 the, in the left side to developers and in the right side to end users. Then to developers, I think that brings loads of benefits. 
Uh, first of all, um, you know, sh shorter time to market, that's very important. Now it's more and more easy to do extensions to Open Bravo. Um, you can leverage in other people's work because now you can separate properly the, the your extensions uh, and then publish in a separate source code repository and then having other people uh, to contribute. Before that, this is what's really challenging to do. Um, it, is it scales much better because you can separate uh, the components and also you have licensing freedom. I mean, we, we use the Open Bravo license, but you can select any license that you want for, for the extensions, you know, that suits your business model or, or, the, or the community that you are trying to build uh, around your extension. And for users, basically, it makes the product uh, more easy to deploy, more easy to maintain, and obviously reduces the, their cost of, of ownership of, of the solution. Then, another thing that we have been working on that is quite interesting uh, and is connected to modularity is all of these modules you know, you, you have to have a way of distributing them. Imagine that you have, uh, well, that, that's that reality, that, that you have a module that extends Open Bravo functionality for, for the Spanish market and the American market, no? And then you have to have a way of informing everyone that you have this functionality and, and, and a way of distributing it. Then Open Bravo has a server that is called a central repository where all the modules are stored, no? In, in, in a very similar way where in Eclipse or, or Firefox you have central repositories of modules. Um, you, you don't need to, to publish the modules there in, in order to work. You, you, you can set up your own central repository. You, you can deploy them without the need of having a central server. But if you have there, th if you publish them there, that everyone can publish there, is for free, and so on, uh, the only, the only, th the only requirement that we ask is that it's published under uh, an open source license. Um, you expose your work, you expose your project to all the users that have an open Bravo installation. Okay? Then this connects very well, this connects very well with the, net with the second infrastructure that we have been building that we think that is very key. And I, I have been the person leading this project. Um, until now, the, the set of tools that we provided uh, to our community were targeting, uh, were target to build Open Bravo as a, as a core project. No? We had a source control system, we had a back system that is based on Mantis, we have an, an, open, an open Bravo wiki, and all this infrastructure were really there to, to build Open Bravo as a core project. But now that the people have the ability of building extensions, the, the, the the people can go by their own way doing their own things, then we wanted to provide them an infrastructure that also helps them a set of tools to, to, to develop easily all these, uh, all these modules, all of these extensions with a very similar infrastructure to the one that we are using for, for core. Then we have built something that we call the Open Bravo Forge that is basically a set of services where I is this is basically a place where you can register a project and a set of services are offered to you for free if you work with an open source license. That is basically a back control system based on Mantis, a source control system based on Subversion, a wiki space based on Open Bravo Wiki, and, and a set of tools that, that are you, you are the person responsible to administrate them, and where you can have uh, complete control over, over your project. But more important than that, uh, because we at Open Bravo and all the people that are around our ecosystem are working on this tool. If you work on this tool, you make your work uh, very visible to the rest of the people and also can be very easily uh, published into the central repository. No? Then, in addition to that, uh, another very important thing in open source project, I think, is the recognition. No? The people, sometimes they do lots of things for free and it's very important to recognize them. Then we have built uh, a complete system here where people, uh, where we recognize people's contribution. No? And we call it this uh, karma. And also, a an very important thing also is that here uh, we have now a, a place where you can see all the Open Bravo projects um, that are in our ecosystem. Even if you decide that you don't want to use this infrastructure, imagine that you want to use SourceForce or Google Code or any of the forge that are out there, we are fine. We st you still can come here and register your project and link uh, all of your development tools to external links, that's no problem. 
then let me show you how the Open Bravo Forge looks like. Then you see this is a basically a, a, a place where all the ecosystem can contribute. Then um, here, for example, you have all the blog posts that our community is generating. Everyone can participate in, in what we call the Open Bravo Planet. Then here you have the number of downloads of, of the whole ecosystem right now. Uh, when I take this sc screen capture, there were none yet. And for example, here you have the list of the most active users, the most active projects, and so on. Then as you can see there, in, in the register project button, everybody that registers and to register is for free can register here a project and, and have access to all of these resources. At there, at the, at, the, at the left side, at the very bottom, you have something that is the project directory where you can browse the, the different taxonomies of the project directory and see all the solutions that, um, that we have. The address of, of this uh, web property is forge.openbravo.com. Um, we are working extensively on this infrastructure. We already have um, 5,000 developers registered and 30 developers. We launched this use uh, 10 days ago. Then we are still working very hard on, on making it more suitable uh, for the needs of our people. And this is an infrastructure that we are going to be investing a lot during the next uh, couple of years. One of the interesting things that uh, the, the Open Bravo Forge thing does is, is, is to give a visibility of all the people that have these little projects around our ecosystem. And for example, there is lots of people that is building reports, that is building connectors, extensions, and now they can have all of them listed here. Then what are our learnings? No? Because for me, there are different kinds of communities. There are the communities that uh, they are born as communities, no? for example, there are many people I I in the net, for example, like the KDA, the genome projects. All of these projects are community born and community driven from the very beginning. A couple of people that, you know, they, they identify a need and they work together I in a very meritocratic way to, to, to fix uh, a problem or to develop a piece of software or, or like a Linux kernel. And then there are projects that are dumped into the net, like it happens with Mozilla in 10 years ago, or it happened with, with Open Bravo, and then the challenges are very different because uh, you bring to the net, for example, in our case, uh, one million lines of code, and uh, before that, probably most of the pro most of the processes that you were using were not open source friendly. Uh, your developers that don't have an open source culture, and so on. No, then I think that the challenges that people uh, that is th that publish into into internet uh, projects that were not open source before. In our case, we were open source, but we were not following an open source development model. Have uh, a set of challenges. Then here, uh, I want to share you with you our learnings. First, I think that it's very important to, to be uh, trustworthy, and that's something that I think that we have addressed with the Open Bravo Manifesto. Uh, and I think that it's very important that if you are leading a project, everyone has very clear how, are you, if you are here for business, how are you going to make money? What things uh, are you going to be uh, ready to invest for? And obviously, what are the dynamics and the governance of, of the project? No? And there are many ways of governing a project, and from the Apache Foundation to the Genome Foundation, there are many ways. And I, I think that is very clear that you said that very clearly from, th from the beginning. Um, Connected to that, I also think that uh, nowadays it's very difficult. I, I mean, you have to be uh, really dummy company if you want to hide something, because in the internet there is no su such a thing like hiding. Then I, I think that it's, it's really important that you are honest from the beginning, because if not, people is going to find out in the short term. Then um, I, I think that we learn also that it's very easy, it's very important also to have a, a, a platform, at least in our uh, space, that is easy to extend and easy to maintain. I mean, very uh, complex pieces of software that have a very high uh, barrier entrance level uh, also is very hard to, to get contributors. Then it's very easy that your software is easy to stand and easy to develop. Um, I also think that we have learned it's very important that um, even if you are the largest company, in, like in our case, that is pushing this project, it's very important that you behave uh, as 
as the rest of the community does. I mean, you, don't sh you should not have any special privileges by the fact that someone is paying your salary to contribute to the Open Bravo project, you know? And you should follow the same processes and, and, and use the same tools that the rest of the community is doing. And that's very good because um, if, if ob obviously you always have um, processes that are not perfect, then that help us to, 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 to have better processes in place for everybody. Then now, for example, at, at Open Bravo, we have people um, that, that we pay for writing the writing uh, the software for us in different parts of Spain. Uh, we have people in Barcelona, that's where I, I am based. People in Madrid, people in the Basque Country. We now have people in the States, people in India, and all of these people that are distributed, you know, different time zones, uh, different cultures uh, are successfully uh, contributing to Open Bravo. Then I think that all of this obviously is a learning for us because some of these guys are facing the same challenges that external people to our company were facing just two years ago. No? Then it's very important that the, co the company behave as a, as, a co as a community too. Then I, I think that it's very important uh, that if you lead, lead by example, no? I mean, don't do things that you don't want people to do. Then I think that also we learned that it's very important um, the recognition and meritocracy. I mean, the, pr the project is called Open Bravo RP, but uh, we are so thankful to all these people that below Open Bravo, I mean, I I below the stack, has provided value to us. You know, Apache, Linux, MySQL, all these guys, and all the people that on top of Open Bravo has provided value. You know, the people that is developing localization extensions and so on. No, then. Every time that we do the releases, the release notes of the product, every time th that we do communications uh, in the source code, all over the place, we try to give proper recognition to all these guys that uh, are helping us to, to, to get a better project. And also we learn that it's very important to invest on, on, on lower the collaboration barriers. I mean, I think that the Open Bravo Forge is one, one of the examples. Then. I hope that if you are thinking of publishing your own uh, open source project, uh, these learnings um, help to you. And that's basically our experience. Then I, I have finished for today. Then um, if, if you have any questions, uh, I would like to take them now, or I'm going to be around then. If, if you want to stop me anytime, I will be more than happy to talk to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, as mentioned, we have time for questions. Please feel free. Uh, you said that uh, Open Bravo has an open source license. Can you be more specific on what kind of license and yeah. how do you prote protect your intellectual property? OK. We currently have a MPL license, you know, we, s we decided to have that license back in 2005. That's a long time ago. That's at the time that many open source projects were using MPL, you know, Sugar, Alfresco, all these guys. N now, nowadays, we have uh, an MPL-based uh, license. And th this license gives lots of freedom, because you can even fork uh, Open Bravo and build commercial products o on top of it without giving back the the source code, you know, it's, it's a very, it's a very uh, open license. No, we, we in the future might consider to change the license to GPL. That's something that we are strongly c considering at this point. But for now, what we have is MPL. Any other questions? Yes, I'd like to know how does Open Bravo differ from um, Open ERP, which is much more stronger in the US than like Open Bravo is uh, here in, in Europe. Um, can you repeat the question? I didn't understand the beginning. There is another big open source ERP player. It's Open ERP. It's very strong in the US. So how do the products? Differ in terms of okay. functionality, etc. I, I honestly don't think of other open source projects as competing projects. I think that uh, 
what we are fighting here is to open up a space that traditionally has been monopolized by proprietary vendors, Microsoft, Namix, SAP, and so on. Then OpenRP, Adempier, Compier, uh, all these guys, Open Bravo, what I think that we are doing is opening up a space that is the open source ARP space um, against <laughs> these proprietary vendors, then I don't see I don't see them as a competitors. I mean, when we sell products, when we, we, we sell services, we never face these guys as competitors. I, in the same way that I think that they never see us as competitors, because what we are competing aga against is the um, the proprietary vendors that are the ones that have 99% of this market. Then we, we are the people. All the open source uh, IRP projects. I think that we are the people that is innovating in this market, you know, bringing open standards, lowering the corroborator barriers, and so on. Then, as in many other spaces, like, if for example, the desktop, you have KDA, like, have Genome, and so on. I think that all these projects will have their own space, their own customers, and so on, and we will be happy. How we compare directly with Open Bravo and Open Bravo RP, I think that, and Open IRP, sorry, I think that it's different technology. I mean, um, Open Open IRP, they use Python. We use Java. You know, probably if you are in the corporate world, Java is more. F you are more familiar with that. Um, they have been around for more than five years, and they, they have a very solid product, and it's very well localized to many countries. Then, I, I think that the best thing that you can do if you are evaluating a, a product that is open source is, is to download the project, test it yourself, and see which one suits better to your needs, because th there are questions like how well is localized for, uh, for your country, uh, how well is adapted for the market segment or the, or the industry that your company works, uh, and so on. And, and those are all of these questions I think that are better if you find out by, by yourself. I, I hope that this answers your, your question. <laughs>